We're going to close the show today with a little parable from the great science fiction writer Terry Bisson. It's a reminder that as advanced as we humans may become, we are not necessarily the be-all and end-all of evolution. So, who made the machines? That's who we want to contact. They made the machines. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Meat made the machines. Okay, that's ridiculous. You're asking me to believe in sentient meat. I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. These creatures are the only sentient race in the sector, and they're made out of meat. Okay, maybe they're like the Orphali. You know, a carbon-based intelligence yeah. that goes through a meat stage. No, they're, they're born meat and they die meat. We studied them for several of their lifespans, which didn't take too long. We all know the lifespan of meat. Ugh. Maybe they're like the, the Wedeli, a meat head with an electron plasma brain inside. No, we, we thought of that. They're meat all the way through. No brain. Oh, there's a brain. There's a brain, all right. It's just that the brain is made out of meat. So... What does the thinking? You're not understanding. I, the, the brain does the thinking. The meat. You're asking me to believe in thinking meat. Yes, thinking meat. Conscious meat. Loving meat. Dreaming meat. The, the meat is the whole deal. Are you getting the picture? They're made out of meat? And they've been trying to get in touch with us for almost a hundred of their years. Wow. So, what does the meat have in mind? First, it wants to talk to us. Then I imagine it wants to explore the universe, contact other sentients, swap ideas and information, the usual. We're supposed to talk to me. That's the idea. That's the message they're sending out by radio. Hello, anyone there? Anyone home? That sort of thing. They actually talk then? They use words and ideas and concepts? Oh, yes. Except they, they do it with meat. I thought you just told me they use radio. They do, but, but what do you think is on the radio? Meat sounds. You know how when you slap or flap meat, it makes a noise. They, they talk by flapping their meat at each other. They can even sing by squirting air through their meat. Oh, my God. Ugh, this is too much. What do you advise? Officially or unofficially? Both. O officially, we're required to contact, welcome, and log in any and all sentient races or multi-beings in the quadrant without prejudice, fear, or favor. Unofficially, I would advise that we erase the records and forget the whole thing. I was hoping you would say that. It seems harsh, but there's a limit. Okay, how many planets are we dealing with here? Just one. They can travel to other planets in special meat containers, but they can't live on them. And being meat, they only travel through sea space, which limits them to the speed of light and makes the possibility of their ever making contact pretty slim. Infinitesimal, in fact. So we just pretend there's no one home in the universe? That's it. Okay, and the ones who've been aboard our vessels, the ones you've probed, you're sure they won't remember? They'll be considered crackpots if they do. We went into their heads and smoothed out their meat, so we're just a dream to them. A dream to meet. How strangely appropriate that we should be meat's dream. And we can mark this sector unoccupied. Okay, agreed. Officially and unofficially, case closed. Any others? Anyone interesting on that side of the galaxy? Yes, uh, a rather shy but sweet hydrogen core cluster intelligence in a class 9 star in G445 zone. Uh, it was in contact two galactic rotations ago. Wants to be friendly again. They always come around. Why not? Imagine how unbearably, how unutterably cold the universe would be if one were all alone. They're Made Out of Meat, by the writer Terry Bisson. It was first published in 1981. Our version was performed by Miriam Tolan and Russ Armstrong. Jonathan Mitchell produced and directed. 